Okay, Tuesday, 21st of May, 2024. So, you don't change Bitcoin, Bitcoin changes you. Mm. So, this is a nice little uh, meme that's been going around the Bitcoin space for whew, 10, 10 or so, maybe or so years. It actually came from one of Max Kaiser's episodes on the Kaiser Report 10 odd years ago, 8 odd years ago, something in that vicinity. Because it talks about the code is unchangeable. It's, it is what it is. It's fixed. It can't be changed. And it's open source. So everyone can see what it is. So everyone that's tried to change it has failed. This is what's called Bitcoin derangement syndrome, where they look at this and they want to change it. It's not doing what they want them to do. And they want to change it, but they can't. Because the incentive structure, the game theory is too strong incentives the positive feedback loop is too strong for any one person to change any personality to hard fork yes you can hard fork the code you can copy the code but you can't copy the network you can't copy the brand reputation trust the the bounty that satoshi that is satoshi's bitcoin you can't copy the uh, miners you can't take them with you all these things is too entrenched it's too it's gone it's escape velocity it reached escape velocity a few years ago, maybe four to six or so years ago, but that's another story. So Bitcoin changes you. Now, it's an accidental test in finance, and you learn a lot about money through Bitcoin. That's quite interesting because some people would come for the money, stay for the revolution. They come for the money, the number go up technology, and stay for the revolution, as in what that means for them themselves into the future, i.e. They get an accidental to understand Bitcoin, to fully go beyond trading and speculating. You, you have an accidental, just by chance, lesson in finance. You learn about money. You learn about human incentives. You learn about Austrian economics. You learn about whatever else, praxeology, you name it. You learn about these different things and you understand money more. Gresham's Law, for example. Mm. S sound money. Weak forms of currency and strong forms of currency. Hmm. You learn about these things. The impact in history, events in history. You know, there's a great website. WTF happened in 1971, I believe it is, or 73, 71. Hmm. You learn about money. You learn about how to budget your money. You learn about how to finance your money. You learn about DCA, things like that. You learn more about how to handle cash, how to handle money. Because, you see, also... As you increase on as you increase your knowledge and increase your holding of Bitcoin almost at the same time proportionally they support each other you start to think more long term and this is one way that the Bitcoin itself the technology changes you you start to go you start to think more long term two years three years five years ten years twenty years fifty years a hundred years into the future intergenerationally mm, there's another meme in this space that talks about you don't sh you don't store you don't save bitcoin for your first name but for your last name i.e your generations the next generation the grandchildren the great grandchildren those who are, who are not even born yet who won't even be born for decades from today you're saving it for them because you see as you become more and more confident about the technology and, on, and you understand the awareness you, your awareness increases and you become more confident of the direction it's going to go up and to the right, you start to think, well, if it's going to be whatever price by 2030, you then start to think instinctively, what can I do now to ensure that I am still around, I'm still healthy and I'm still strong by that date in the future? Because there's no point in the future, the price goes up and to the right, you've got loads of Satoshis, but you've got poor health, you can't really enjoy the wealth. Or, or even you can't pass it on to the next generation. And this is more about estate planning and inheritance planning, but that's another conversation altogether. Well, you can't do it. You, know, you want to be alive to benefit from it, so you have to think more long-term. Hmm. And this kind of happens as you learn more about the software, learn more about it, the asset itself, and you become more and more confident of the direction, the trajectory into the future. Fair enough. So it's worth understanding about that. Bitcoin doesn't change you, you change Bitcoin. 
it's an accidental lesson in finance as well because you learn about money and balance balance sheets and and, and financing you, you think because you're also thinking what clever ways can i what clever means can i use and do to acquire more bitcoin more satoshis i do this and that and that and this what if i do this then how can i support what about this over here you're thinking why because you understand that the pounds and dollars you have today are melting away yeah. so the you know, melting ice cubes as the meme goes as well by ta uh, sailor so why hold on to this i want to get as much as that as possible as quick as possible yesterday because it's cheap it's going to be cheaper t today it's a cheap price compared to who knows when in the future who i couldn't tell you when but if you as as your as your number of satoshis increases so does your conviction and vice versa you're increasingly confident where the general direction is again up and to the right so you want to get as much as possible and you're thinking cleverly creatively and you're working harder what can i do with this mining fiat basically doing more ways to mine fiat more ways to acquire more in different methods and techniques to get more bitcoin to get more satoshis mm. and as you get more and as you understand more as i said you think longer term and that's powerful there's a nice meme that's been going around i guess it's from dune one i mentioned before in a previous video but this woman in a veil and there's like subtitles and it says we measure our plans in centuries Whew, that's amazing that's beautiful that is beautiful and i am thinking personally into you know three five years into the future but I, i'm trying to push for 10 years I'm trying to push for 20 years like what do i want what do i want to see 20 years from now then today build towards it you need to think very carefully and then a hundred years so that's something completely different but still you need to think hard about that and then you can push it again by, by logical extension 200 years 150 years you know where, where, do you draw, where do you draw the line fair enough but those are some interesting ways that bitcoin have changed people an accidental lesson in finance which is priceless which is useful and you start thinking long term which is good because i think as a rule of thumb that thinking long term is the only game worth playing into the future i like i coined this nice phrase a couple of years ago which is compounded delayed gratification compounded delayed gratification so you've got typical delayed gratification you know i have this marshmallow ah, now or if i wait 10 minutes i'll get two i'll have one more extra two in total well okay i'll take that but also compounded in the sense of I do as much as i can now activities and tasks and things that make the adrian of tomorrow his job easier it like things are paid for things are organized things are done already so that on the day one week three three weeks a month from now two months from now i just walk right in you know or you know the flight's booked for example and already paid for so on the day i just didn't i just get the flight and go or the airbnb for example for the next holiday is fully paid off so when i go there i haven't, I haven't got to worry about the uh, paying off the Airbnb and likewise all the cash you know, in euros or dollars are reserved. So when I go there, I haven't got to worry about spending money. I just, you know, how much money I'm spending, I just spend it and enjoy the time. What can I do now to make tomorrow exponentially easier and frictionless, more and more frictionless, powerful. Yeah, and that's how I see it. And that's how one way Bitcoin has changed me. But that's another conversation because that, that's the Bitcoin standard. That's about valuing money, valuing your, no, no, valuing your wealth in Bitcoin and looking at that, how many Bitcoins and Satoshis, and then realizing how many things you can buy with that. Because over time, things get cheaper in, everything gets cheaper in Bitcoin. It's deflationary. Again, money you can earn, money you can spend, apolitical, decentralized, fixed supply, deflationary, powerful stuff. Things get cheaper on a Bitcoin standard. Hmm. But that's a whole other conversation. But Bitcoin changes you. Remember, you don't change Bitcoin, Bitcoin changes you. But otherwise, you will see me tomorrow.